This week on Christian World News, a Muslim nation welcomes evangelical pastors from America. We explore what's behind this new open door policy and if it's helped that nations, if it's helping the nation's Christians. Plus, mixing cool cars with a powerful message, the trauma that changed this man's life, fueling his passion for preaching the gospel. And running for Zion. These Christians see the Jerusalem Marathon as more than a race. It's a ministry. Welcome to Christian World News. I'm Mark Martin. And I'm Wendy Griffith. A Muslim nation opens its arms to a delegation of evangelical Christians. Azerbaijan recently invited more than a dozen evangelical pastors on an official visit. The former Soviet Republic is a majority Muslim country, but has a long history of tolerance between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. Government officials hosted the group of 15 evangelical leaders and a rabbi and want to show the Muslim world that peace and tolerance is the way to go. Jewish and Christian leaders hope this trip could be the first step towards reconciliation. There are 57 Muslim nations. Azerbaijan has led the effort in terms of presenting a more progressive, a more centrist, a more inclusive, a more welcoming Islam than is supportive of the State of Israel. I believe it's an extraordinary moment in the Kingdom of God where God is moving behind the scenes in ways that we can't imagine. The group toured the country together and even paid homage to the civilians who were massacred by the communists during the Soviet era. Joel Rosenberg is an evangelical Christian living in Israel. In the past two years, he's been instrumental in bringing leaders of Muslim countries together with American evangelicals. Those nations include Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, the United Arab Emirates, and most recently, Azerbaijan. Recently, Christian World News host George Thomas spoke with Joel about these exciting relationships. Joel Rosenberg joins us now. You know, these meetings seemed uh, unthinkable just a, a few years ago. What's opening these doors? Well, what God is doing is, I, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, we, what's happening is that Iran's threat to the Arab world is fundamentally uh, reshuffling the deck. Every Arab leader now has to think, who is my real friend yeah. and who is my real foe? And they're concluding that they have had a relationship that's been decent with the United States, but they've got to get much closer. And they look at Israel, their historic enemy, and they think, wait, Israel is as dead set against the Iranian regime and, 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 and neutralizing that threat as anybody. Maybe we need to become friends with Israel mm -hmm. rather than enemies. And the evangelicals are somehow in the middle. Yeah. We love Israel, but... People like myself are not hostile to the Arab world, and they're beginning to invite us to say, let's talk about peace, let's talk about religious freedom. Uh, God is doing it, but those are, I think, some of the reasons why these Arab leaders want to do it, because they, they want to convince Americans as a culture, not just Washington, that they're on the good guy side, mm -hmm. that, they're, that they're really making reforms and they... They're not enemies. Uh, are these meetings having any positive impact for Christians in these nations? I mean, what are the Christian leaders in country telling you about your dialogue with these Muslim leaders? We don't even go to a country um, uh, unless we've worked with a local Christian leadership and said, does this help you? Now, with the one exception of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. the Saudi Arabian Christian community is pretty much underground. They're very cautious. So we did go to Saudi Arabia and met with the crown prince without connecting with the local Christian community yet. Yeah. But we raised with the crown prince, listen, you don't have Christian churches operating now. Could we talk about that? Are you open to that type of reform? Mm -hmm. But in every other uh, area, we specifically meet with the Christian leadership and, uh, and they feel encouraged that American evangelicals who've always loved Israel are beginning to say, hey, we love and, and need to connect with our brothers and sisters in the Arab world as well. What's the ultimate goal uh, of these meetings? Well, ultimately, we want to be a witness of Jesus Christ to all these Arab Muslim leaders and their countries. We want to strengthen our Christian brothers and sisters who faced very difficult times in these countries. We want there to be more religious freedom. We also want to sort of grease the wheels for peace 
between Israel and these Arab nations. As you know, Joel, uh, this is a part of the world that is not a very friendly neighborhood. Um, uh, how, how much trust do you have in these leaders to create this openness and the space for religious freedom, human rights, and so forth? Well, some of that is you have to build trust. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're in an early stage of building these relationships. But here's the key. Each of these Arab leaders, uh, Egypt, Jordan, United Arab Emirates, and Saudi Arabia, are making huge, huge reforms in their countries. Mm -hmm. Now, most Americans, most American evangelicals, aren't aware of those big reforms, but I'm watching them closely. The delegations I take are watching, but we want to ask questions. These Arab leaders ought to get credit for the big reforms they're making. Now, mm -hmm. is there a lot more to do? Absolutely. And we encourage and push a little bit that they make bigger reforms, more reforms. But I think you have to, uh, you know, the Bible tells us to pray for kings and all those in authorities, to honor the king. Part of honoring people is to recognize what they're doing right and to affirm it, to encourage it, mm -hmm. and not just to criticize from the sidelines. Mm -hmm. You are a believer in biblical prophecy, in, in God orchestrating human events. Uh, what do you think he's doing right now in the Middle East? How much time did you say it was left in the segments? <laughs> we are in the most dramatic yeah. se uh, season of change. And, and it's all dri being driven by the Iran threat. The, mm. the, the fear of Iran in Israel and Saudi and the Emiratis and all the Gulf states and all the Arab countries is, again, fundamentally changing the dynamic. It's drawing Israel and the Arab world closer to America. It's drawing them closer to each other. And fascinating, it's opening doors for evangelical Christians. The, Saud, the Saudi family has not met with evangelical Christians in 300 years. We were the first delegation to each of these countries as evangelicals. So what I'm saying is, I think God is opening doors um, that at least they're, look, I believe every person in the world needs a friend who knows and loves Jesus. And the Arab world, the Muslim world has been largely closed at the leadership level to people who love Jesus, but now there's a dialogue starting. And it's not that we are changing our views, we're not. We are praying with these leaders, we're explaining what does it mean to be an evangelical Christian. That's not a term mm -hmm. used much in the region. So I'm just grateful the Lord is opening these doors. Where it goes, it's in the Lord's hands. Okay, terrific, we have to leave it there. Joel, as always, pleasure to have you back Great on to the podcast. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, George. Up next, his love for cool cars is surpassed only by his passion for sharing the gospel, the new TV show that brings them both together. CBN presents The Eye Wills of God, your path to overcoming fear and anxiety. We're going to talk about some of the incredible promises God has made to his children. In Pat Robertson's newest teaching, you will discover the I wills of God. I will rescue him, protect him, answer him, be with him in trouble, deliver him, honor him, satisfy him with long life, show him my salvation, and see amazing stories of God's promises in action. What I felt was loved and treasured. God spared my life twice in three days. The good Lord had given me a second chance. Break free from stress and despair. The Lord doesn't want you to live in fear, but to know the rewards given to those who love God. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com. The I Wills of God, your path to overcoming fear and anxiety. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. 
Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Brenda, you gotta see the video I saw in the 700 Club. I pray God will do the same awesome work in your life. Go to CBN.com to I Saw It on the 700 Club for a fast, easy way to see and share your favorite videos. Welcome back. A pair of college students have created the Bible made for millennials and made by millennials. The two are involved in the campus ministry InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at the University of Southern California. When they saw an opportunity to redesign the Bible for today's visually centric culture, we spoke with Brian Chung of Alabaster Company, and he told us why he's passionate about presenting God's Word creatively. We we're really interested in sort of the intersection of art and faith. Um, in the past, in the church, art has played a very strong and high role with the Renaissance paintings, with stained glass windows. And we, so we wanted to put um, art again at the forefront of showing the world how beautiful God is. Well, it does look beautiful, those pages. Well, you can get the Gospels, Psalms, Proverbs, and Romans from the Alabaster Company. Find out how at our website, cbnnews.com. Well, a new show launches this month combining a love of cars with the love of Christ. The host behind the program brings tremendous passion and experience in both areas. Our John Jessup went behind the scenes and reveals why it's a show you don't want to miss. Welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. Barry McGuire is no stranger to TV, having hosted Car Crazy for years. Now he's back with Ignite Your Life Television. The new venture still features cars and includes an added twist. Think carpool karaoke with a Christ-centered focus. Say the name McGuire's and most people probably think Car Polish. It's a company that's been around for nearly 120 years. And now its president, Barry McGuire, is using his love of cars to launch a new TV show to jumpstart of all things, Revival. This show is about igniting Christians to just know it's not that hard to share your faith. You might think this is Barry's first love, given his rare car collection, the family business, and his passion for the auto industry. But there's something he values even more. There's nothing else, there's nothing compares with the privilege and the experience of moving somebody into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. There's nothing in the human experience, in the human psyche that compares with that, and we can do it every day. He and his wife, Karen, share their faith just about everywhere they go. We have, you know, waitresses and waiters in restaurants. We pray for them when we go to pray for our meal. We ask them, is there anything we can pray for you about? You know, I've never had a, I've never offered a person prayer that they've turned me down once. I've never once had a person say no. Nobody can take my faith away from me. Nobody. At times, he sounds more like a preacher. And Barry told us that's because he believes God used his business as a pulpit for the ministry. I have a passion business with the product that I sell, and I love my business. But that's temporal, isn't it? It's temporal. I figured out a long time ago, it's not going to matter how many of these products I sold 100 years from now. <laughs> it's not even going to matter if I'm a conservative or, or a liberal. The only thing that's going to matter, have I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? And for those of us who have, then the next question is, how many people are going to be in heaven because of your influence? He's even come up with his own version of the Great Commission. Move everybody <laughs> every, day. every day closer, closer to Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> it's something that everybody can understand. Yeah. The Great Commission is, you could really say the Great Commission mm -hmm. is move everybody every day closer to Jesus. After a near fatal viral attack in 2010, he's been a man on mission. Share your faith and let it flow out of you every day. That Starting a ministry called Revival Outside the Walls to get Christians comfortable sharing their faith beyond the church. How did you use your day? How did you use your influence? On the job, off the job, everywhere we go, whether it's, it's in the public place, it's in your workplace, it's in your family, it's in the church pew, or even in a hot rod or roadster. Delta, take two A and B cam. On his show, Barry invites his guests to hop in and you? take Good. a spin through the streets of sunny Southern California, all while discussing ways they've shared their salvation stories. 
They include celebrities and well-known pastors like Greg Laurie. You'll also see not-so-familiar faces representing different generations and backgrounds. That's to show viewers how simple it can be to share your faith. When you share what he's done on the cross, it will change hearts. So these role models, at the end of the program, we want every viewer to say, well, I can do that. Well, that looks like, I want to get in the fun. I can do that. If we could do that, we'll start igniting lives all over. Barry says non-Christians are drawn to our joy, but he adds they don't see it enough because Christians fail to realize the joy that comes from witnessing. You can be on the church board, you can sing in, in the choir, you can be head usher, you can be a Sunday school teacher, I, all of those things. I didn't have joy. I was serving well. But the more Karen I did, the drier we got. It was crazy. But when we start sharing our faith, all of a sudden it's just like, wow. There's nothing even remotely close to the experience in human existence have this experience of knowing we just moved somebody closer to Jesus, that God used us, He orchestrated that. He was there, He spoke through us. Wow. <laughs> I really love this guy. Hmm. It's been a great ride, it has hasn't been. it? it has it's been just fun. been a great ride. Together all the way. <laughs> We're just having so much fun. I feel like my entire life has been a prelude for this moment. Barry McGuire says his life's work, his ministry, his new show, and even his home here in Southern California, they're all for God. And his aim is to spark the same joy and excitement he has in sharing his faith with every believer from coast to coast. John Jessup, CBN News, Newport Beach, California. Great story, John. We'll find out where you can watch Barry's show, Ignite Your Life Television, at our website, that's cbnnews.com. Coming up, these Christians are running the hills of Jerusalem, carrying the burdens of Holocaust survivors and poor and persecuted Jews around the world. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Discover the I wills of God. I will rescue him, protect him, answer him, be with him in trouble, deliver him, honor him, satisfy him with long life, show him my salvation. What I felt was loved and treasured. God spared my life twice in three days. The good Lord had given me a second chance. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com. The I wills of God, the latest teaching from Pat Robertson. China's crackdown on Christians and their churches is intensifying. Last weekend, nearly 50 members of the Early Rain Covenant Church, including 11 children, were arrested at two different locations in the city of Chengdu. Agents from China's Public Security Bureau closed the church last December and arrested Pastor Wang Yi and 160 Christians. 
India is facing a dramatic rise in Christian persecution. The newest figures from a human rights group show that the cases of hate and violence against India's minority Christians jumped 57% in the first two months of this year. That's compared to 49% last year. According to the Evangelical Fellowship of India, 77 incidents were documented against Christians between January and February of 2019. And that's in comparison to just 49 cases in all of 2018. Violent attacks against Christians have steadily increased since a radical Hindu party took control of India's government in 2014. Open Doors has ranked India as the 10th worst country in the world for Christian persecution. Well, this is the ninth year for the Jerusalem Winter Marathon. Runners come from all over the world to run through the streets of historical and modern Jerusalem. It will be a lot of fun, not to run a marathon, but yeah. just to run. <laughs> <laughs> this year, a special group of Christians came to run for Zion. Julie Stahl tells us more. The Run for Zion runners huddled to pray before the race. Well, God morning. This is perfect running conditions. So as a runner, I don't care where I'm at on the planet. I'm already joyful just in faith and just that God has provided the perfect day to run. But my goodness, we are in the promised land. We're bringing our first team of Run for Zion. This is the first time that anyone in the history of the Jerusalem Marathon has promoted this as a Christian experience. Jonathan Feldstein is founder and president of Run for Zion. And it's an Orthodox Jew. It's just so awesome and humbling for me to be able to provide that experience for people. He says his organization gives Christians an opportunity to experience Israel beyond what tours offer. This provides a different prism for people to be able to come and have a, a, a unique experience through running with touring on both sides. But we've also built up the opportunity to bless Israel, not just by being here, but by raising money for various nonprofits that we're supporting. So it's a privilege to be able to move our feet to help the Jewish people. Pastor Ray Hardy from Belmont, North Carolina, and Elizabeth Wong from Phoenix, Arizona, came to Run for Zion in the full marathon. Run for Zion is an organization that is designed to help those people that are Jewish, Holocaust survivors, Mayor Paim, those people that are homeless, those people that are returning on Aliyah from Ethiopia, the Ethiopian Jews. And so we want to be part of helping to make those things happen. I came here because it is the 70th anniversary of the modern state of Israel, the first anniversary of the American embassy's move to Jerusalem. And uh, Jonathan is a personal friend. I really believe in the vision, has run for Zion and integrity and excellence that he walks in. Dr. Pat Castle is founder and president of the largest pro-life running group in the world. He and his wife, Angie, came to run the half marathon. All in Christ, for our pro-life, yeah! I wanted to be right here where Christ walked and wanted to run in his footsteps. This would be my 60th half marathon, and here we are in the Holy Land. So as, as the founder and the president of the largest pro-life team in the world, it is an absolute blessing to represent 10,617 teammates here. Feldstein says he hopes next year to have as many as 500 Christians who will come to run for Zion. Julie Stahl, CBN News, the Jerusalem Marathon, Jerusalem. Thanks, Julie. To see more great stories about the church blessing Israel, check out our CW webpage. You can find it at C Christian. You can find it at cbnnews.com. We'll be right back. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. 
That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Well, when an F4 tornado ripped through Lee County, Alabama earlier this month, Kathy Brown's first thought was to protect the disabled veterans that are under her care. While 23 people died in the twister, Kathy and the veterans were spared. But they did not completely escape the tornado's wrath. Now CBN's Operation Blessing is helping them clean up and rebuild. <laughs> Kathy Brown is an owner and caregiver at Loving Touch, a home for disabled veterans in Lee County, Alabama. She serves 14 veterans at the home and lives next door. Her husband is also a disabled vet. He was awarded the Purple Heart after suffering wounds from a mine in Vietnam. I'm a nurse by trade and that's what I always wanted to be. I'm retired now, but I just always try to make other people feel better. To me, it was always about other people and not myself. On Sunday, March 3rd, Kathy turned on the news and heard the warning, severe weather in the area. Rushing next door to make sure the veterans were safe, her worst concerns came true. Two tornadoes touched down nearby, one on her street. So we got the veterans in a safe place and and just prayed that we would be okay. And thank God we wasn't hurt. Uh, we had no damage to the veteran home. Miraculously, the tornado did not damage her home either, but a path of destruction blew right by her house. The tornado took off almost the entire roof of the Veterans Recreation Center and threw debris all over her yard. It also blew apart her grandchildren's play set. That's when Operation Blessing stepped in to remove the heavy debris. The crew also got up on the roof and covered it with a blue tarp to keep the recreation center dry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kathy believes the Lord sent Operation Blessing workers to her because she did not even have to make a phone call. Her friend reached out to the organization saying, you just have to help this woman. She's the sweetest woman I know besides my mother. It's hard for me. I like to be the one that give. And when Operation Blessing came and they showed up and I didn't even call phone. It's just something that I can't explain. I was so grateful to know that God got somebody that that, that, that will come and you don't even have to ask for the help. He would just send them. Not knowing that you all was gonna come until someone called me early this morning. I was just so grateful. But you know you all showing up and help. It's just something I can hardly explain. Amen. 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 God is faithful and faithful to that faithful servant, Amen. Kathy. I'll I tell you what. Just yeah. love how she said it. And I didn't even ask for this. And they just came and you know, and God just provided. We, awesome. we love it. Until next week, goodbye and God bless. Take care.